There's no problem too big or small, no issue too hot or cold, and no subject these gentlemen won't talk about. Let's head into the lab to see what they're working to figure out today. All right. Let's get into it and get down to it. Welcome to Figure It Out. This is George Grombacher. Joining me as always is Centauri Minor. Hello, folks. And helping us move from awareness to action today is Greg Stan, the mayor of the city of Phoenix. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Centauri, have you ever thought about running for mayor? Oh, that's my question today? Every every podcast he does something to embarrass me or ask me. That's actually a good question. Would I run for mayor? I think in about 20 years, that would be something that I would entertain, but I know that it's a very heavy lift, a hard job to do, and I don't think So I'm are we making an announcement? No, 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 20 no, years no. advance, you're 20 years, oh, yes. I'm mean, in 20 years, I'm going for the, the mayor of Phoenix. <laughs> but no, I've not given it any real thought. Well, maybe you need that much lead time to start fundraising. I'm, 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 I'm not sure what it takes to run a mayoral election these days. Well, probably less than you would you would think. Uh, I would argue that Phoenix, among major American cities, big American cities, probably has the easiest entry path into uh, politics. At least that's my experience. I grew up here in Phoenix, in, in West Phoenix, 39th Avenue and Dunlap, near Metro Center. Uh, my dad was a shoe salesman. My mom was a part-time English teacher. We didn't know anybody in politics. I didn't know anybody in uh, uh, politics. Uh, and so I, I got myself educated, went away for college and law school, but came back. I didn't know anybody except for my guys I played high school basketball with. That was about it. They weren't involved in politics in any regard. I, for some reason, got the political gene, so I was into it. And when a seat came open on the city council, why not? I'll give it a shot. I won. I mean, it was more hard work than money was actually a, a, more, a more important uh, a factor. And a few years later, uh, when the previous mayor finished out his term and there was an open seat on the, on the, for the mayor at the city, I said, I'll give it a shot. And I won. Uh, I'm the mayor. Uh, so there's, there's, there's a much lower barrier to entry than you might, uh, than you might awesome. think. Yeah. Money flows, if you're a hard-working, credible candidate, money will flow to you. It's not like you have to have identified all the money before you, you run. It's like people are like, holy cow, that guy might win. So they start to, you know, they, they want to give you yeah. resources uh, uh, because they want to be behind the, ultimately, what they think is a successful candidate. But first comes hard work and credibility. That's wonderful. Uh, Mr. Mayor, on, in case anybody else is thinking about running for mayor who's listening to this, uh, this yeah. podcast, it's easier than you think. Well, that was certainly something that, that, that we wanted to cover was if people are interested in just getting involved in politics, be it city council, be it mayor, or if they said, you know what, if, if that guy can do it, maybe I'll just run for president, kind of, kind of a deal. <laughs> or, or mayor using the same logic in my case, yeah. <laughs> so we... Actually, go ahead, Centauri. No, so I was going to say uh, we have a limited time with you, but I wanted to get your purview of Phoenix is a very unique city. What do you think is the most pressing and challenging issue for the city of Phoenix? Well, look, we are the fastest growing big city in the United States of America. So the last 30 years, we have exploded in growth. You know, and like so many other cities, our greatest strength is our greatest weakness. I think that became a little bit of a crutch. People kept moving here. So, you know, we kept growing in size and growing further and further in, in the physical location of the, the city, the square miles of the city, kept growing on the outskirts of the city. And growth sustained our economy, uh, which I guess is okay, but that's not a way to build a long-term economy. So the very thing that was our greatest advantage, we're such a popular city and people were, were moving here, now we're the fifth largest city in America in terms of population, but it probably didn't keep us sharp in terms of having a competitive economy. And we saw during the recession where Phoenix got hammered worse than any other big city in the country, that you can't have an economy that's over-reliant on growth and real estate, kind of growth for growth sake. You gotta have an innovative economy, you have to have a export-based, economy, that's what's going to build uh, our competitiveness for the future. And I want Phoenix, Arizona to be second to none in the United States of America in terms of having a competitive uh, economy. Our advantage is that because we're such a young big city, we have a great history, but in terms of being a big city, it's not that old. Our competitive advantage is that we're not tied to any old industries. It's not like Pittsburgh in the steel industry or Detroit in the auto industry. We can decide what we want to be when we grow up, if you will. This generation of people, not just elected officials, but the people listening to this podcast, 
roll up your sleeves, get involved. You can decide the future of Phoenix. There's, I mentioned there's very little barrier to entry to running for mayor. There's, very, there's no barrier to entry to taking a leadership role in this uh, community. There's no old boy network here. Part of being a young big city is that like, you know, you roll up your sleeves, you build a good reputation, you, you, you develop a reputation as someone that keeps your word when you say you're gonna do something, you do it. Boom, you're at the leadership table right now. Um, and so, you know, I think Phoenix is headed in the right direction in terms of building a more innovative economy with the, you know, uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem doing so well, the tech sector doing so well. Our investment in bioscience and research is paying off huge dividends. Um, the, what, what we're doing in Mexico to increase our trade uh, uh, situation where we're, we're the fastest growing uh, export economy in the United States of America, that's because we started out with a low base, uh, so we had a lot of growing up to do. But we have to build new marketplaces for the companies and entrepreneurs uh, here locally. We're heading in the right direction, but make no mistake, uh, we still have to make smart strategic decisions if Phoenix is going to take what I believe is our rightful place as one of the leading economies in not only in the United States of America, but on this uh, on this planet. And we can talk more about that as well. What are some of those things that we need to be sure that we're doing? Because I think you've already had a very, very impressive track record of a lot of the things you've done from a uh, getting a perfect score on the human rights campaign, um, getting rid or, or at least combating veteran homelessness, the innovation things you've done, the infrastructure. But what okay. uh, two things I think that are probably most important, uh, and they very much go hand in hand. Look, we have to have a higher educated populace. Mm -hmm. uh, the educational attainment rate is below the national average, and unless we fix that, we're not gonna be as competitive as we need to be. Look, we're a big city, we're a big region. So, you know, having access to that talent base uh, is, is one of our advantages when we go after economic development projects, new jobs, uh, uh, et cetera. But if we wanna go after the highest wage jobs in the most technical fields, we have to up our game in terms of having a higher educated workforce. That's why Phoenix and ASU work so closely together. It's why Phoenix and Grand Canyon University work so, so much closely together. We don't have as many universities in our community as other cities our size, again, because we're such a young, big city. You don't see a lot of new universities popping up around the country. In fact, it hasn't happened in decades. Right. Uh, that's why ASU is the biggest university in the United States of America mm -hmm. and why you've seen such hyper growth at Grand Canyon University. Obviously, we've, we've also brought up to Phoenix uh, during my time in political life, University of Arizona and their medical school and their cancer center and so many great things. NAU has larger operations in Phoenix uh, than elsewhere, so we're, we're kind of fertile ground for that. And then secondarily, I would argue, um, we, you know, our, our talent base is our people. And our growth within the people is our Latino community. And, you know, politically it's gotten to be such a hot issue, uh, you know, whether or not we're going to fully support our Latino community, fully support a stronger relationship with Mexico, but let me tell you my view on it. Our Hispanic population is our greatest strength, bar none, because our Latino population is young. It's by far younger than the overall average age population. Two, um, it's disproportionately bilingual. Three, it is an incredibly entrepreneurial community, particularly Latinas. That's where, if you see where the, where the Companies are being formed, especially small business here. It, it, it is disproportionately Latinas that are forming uh, those companies. And so many of our local Latino community have either family or friends relationships with Mexico, Central Latin America. That is a formula for economic success. If we can harness that talent, and Phoenix is gonna be a majority Latino city in the very near future, if we can harness that talent, and that's a big if, I think we will, but it's not a given. If we can harness that talent, make sure that our Latino population is graduating high school in larger numbers, going on to our universities and studying obviously the STEM and STEAM fields, science, technology, engineering, arts and math. If we can do it, we will be the strongest economy in 20 or 30 years with a strong uh, base in science and technology and research and a strong uh, export uh, economy. We can do it, uh, but it's in the balance, and, and those decisions are being made right now as we speak. Will we be the, um, or is there already a majority Latino city in the United States, or will Phoenix be the first one? Maybe Los Angeles is there now, but, but, but obviously that is the fastest growing minority population in the, uh, in, in the country. The more diverse your city is, the greater opportunity you have. Uh, you know, I mean, I think it's a really cool thing to have diversity from around the globe because it makes us a more interesting place to live, but make no mistake, 
if you can harness that diverse talent, you're going to be yourself uh, in, a, in a pole position uh, moving forward. But I think it's unfortunately with the education investment by, made by the state of Arizona, if we continue being at the bottom of the list, we simply cannot compete uh, internationally as we need to. No uh, question about that. It seems to me that, that politics is occupying a greater portion of people's attention and time today, more, more than it used to, and perhaps that's because uh, President Trump was such a prominent public figure before he uh, ran for president, became president. You just returned from, I believe, New York City and a, a um, consortium of mayors from around the country sponsored by, by Mike Bloomberg talking about best practices. Um, from my perspective, a lot of the things that make us happy are our local connections. And being a mayor, you have the ability to make, I think, greater change than, let's say, the federal government. What would be, this is kind of the longest sure, question. Sure, sure. That That's all right. Good question so far. Heard. Yeah. But with people, I think, being very frustrated by the political process and feeling like they're not empowered to make any change, here at the local level, from your experience talking to other mayors around the country, what advice did you come back with or what advice would you give? Well, your observation is accurate. Look, people don't see leadership coming from Washington. They say inaction. They're frustrated with Washington. Hyper-partisanship has taken over Washington. So much the same thing at our state legislature where it seems like decisions are made based on whether they can, you know, one political party can score points at the expense of other political party, et cetera. We don't operate that way as a city. As a mayor, I get judged based on whether I get things done. Right. It doesn't matter whether rhetorically I score some political points at the expense of uh, people that oppose me. Nobody cares about that. As mayor, all they care about is, are you moving your city forward? Are you advancing your economy? Do my kids have a brighter future uh, as a result of your time uh, in leadership? So that you know, when we do things like have the largest transportation infrastructure investment in the country, which we did here in Phoenix. When, in 2015, when the voters of Phoenix passed Proposition 104, by a lot, I might add, um, that, you know, that sent a message about our, our priorities. Nobody cared whether that was a Republican or Democrat idea, just that it's a good idea to advance this city, both from a transportation perspective and an economic perspective and an educational perspective, because it'll connect people to, uh, to jobs. The Bloomberg thing that you described, Mayor Bloomberg brought together Harvard Business School and Harvard Kennedy School of Government to train what they considered some of the most active, uh, successful mayors around the country, and me too, I guess they picked me as well, uh, to, to, uh, to learn um, how to look at issues facing the city from different uh, perspectives. See, it's not just enough to be good-hearted or have good intentions. You gotta have the skills necessary to drive forward progress. And that's what they did. So I spent three days in a classroom learning from some of the top business professors in the United States of America about how business leaders drive an agenda forward. And there's a lot of le uh, lessons that we can learn as, as political leaders. You know, again, the, the point is, if you're gonna be in government, you got to have the right priorities, but then also the right strategies about how to advance that agenda. And that's what that program was all about. And it was a really good experience for me. That's awesome. So a parent listening to this, talking about how important education is, and they say, I want to make sure that my kids get a great public education. What would be your advice to them? Well, uh, you know, first off, uh, you got to, I'm a parent myself and I've got two, two young kids. You got to get involved in your own child's education. So, you know, take care of your own business. Make sure you're not just helping your child with homework, et cetera, but you're involved in your child's uh, school. But then secondarily, you know, this, this issue of education finance and whether or not we have the appropriate resources so that our schools and teachers and principals can do the job that we ask them to do. And we ask them to do a lot. It is my firm belief that we do not give them the resources to do so. Your obligation as a parent, your obligation as a citizen, and, you, and just you're a citizen listening to this podcast, whether or not you have a child in school, you got to get involved. My attitude is, you know, it, I just can't lament what goes down to, down to the legislature. I got to roll up my sleeves and get involved as well. So I'm going to complain about lack of resources from the legislature. I'm going to complain loudly because it is not helping our economic positioning around the country, around, around the globe. But I'm also going to do what I can. Here's what we're doing in the city of Phoenix. We're getting tons of volunteers into our schools to read one-on-one -on -one with kids because reading by third grade is like 
the number one indicator whether that child's going to graduate college, move on, uh, graduate high school, move on to college. Here's the other indicator: Are kids doing math at grade level in, by eighth grade? So reading by third grade, math at grade level by eighth grade. We just start launching a new program to get kids, oh, again, using volunteers that the city's providing, mostly retired citizens. That's a whole talent base that's out there, are retired folks that are begging to get back active in the community, people that have had successful lives and careers that all you gotta do is ask them. They're gonna be in the schools, directly working with students one-on-one -on -one to get them to eighth grade and math level. We are working with a program called Great Starts where we work with kids in higher poverty areas. When they sign up for kindergarten, they, their siblings, their parents can get free access to our great institutions like the Science Center and the Children's Museum and the Herd Museum and the Phoenix Zoo and the list goes on and on so they can get the same kind of cultural learning that I give my kids uh, and, and, and every single weekend uh, in, uh, in Phoenix. So many parents and families feel disconnected from that. We provide them free access and transportation to have that. And the City of Phoenix, by the way, we actually have a high school at Burton Bar Library you can get a free high school education, an online education. It's not for high school age students. It's for people that didn't finish high school during the traditional high school years. They realize that they've moved on in their lives, that they've got to get that high school degree in order to advance, maybe someone who wants to become a nurse, et cetera. You can go to Burton Bar Library, and in a short period of time, you can get an accredited high school uh, degree. People don't realize that, some of the cool things that we're uh, doing in the city of Phoenix. So you gotta be active in your own kid's life, you gotta be active in larger policy issues, and then you gotta volunteer uh, as well. And so many other things that we've gotta do to make sure that we've got the education system to prepare our students for the future. That's excellent. So I, I have my final question yep. to you is that, so I'm a Phoenix native, grew up here as well. Um, much like you, left for college, but then came back. Thank so you. what would you say to people like me who's left and are still gone, how do we get kids from Phoenix back to Arizona, and then how do we attract good talent here in general. Growing up in Phoenix, living in Phoenix is a gift. And let me tell you uh, why. Because, uh, you know, there are, you can complain about any city. Uh, and I, we accept uh, constructive criticism well because I want to be the best city, most competitive city I can. But there is no city in the country of such size and importance where you can be a leader, whether it's a leader in politics, in business, in education, philanthropy. Uh, the arts and culture scene, uh, whatever it might be, at such an early age without having to kiss anybody's ring or be from the right families or anything uh, like that. Nobody cares in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, who your mom or dad is or what neighborhood you grew up in. You roll up your sleeves, you get active in the community, you have a seat at the leadership uh, table, and you can help determine the future of this city. There is no other big city in the country that has that same um, uh, attribute, and I and, and I'm, I'm I am the example. Roll up your sleeves. Get in, if you if you like politics, find a, a candidate you like and believe in. Work on that person's campaign, and you'll find that you'll rise to the leadership of that campaign immediately. And the people you meet will be people that are going to help you uh, in the community advance your you know whatever whatever uh, a volunteer or, or or policy goal you care about. You can have an effect on that almost uh, right away. And again, Phoenix is wonderfully unique in that regard, and I love it. Entrepreneurialism, being self-starter, self-motivation, that's in the DNA of people from Phoenix, and that's our one of our main competitive advantages moving forward. That's excellent. Welcome, and we're glad you came back, by the way. I think that uh, both you guys went to experience cold weather for uh, for college, and then realized that that's kind of what I thought. I thought you were going to say <laughs> that, that doesn't snow in Phoenix. <laughs> anyway, as, as our time is drawing to a close, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much again. Is there anything else you'd like to get off your chest? Uh, so I'm just based on the nature of the questions. I'm guessing that your listeners are people that care about the city, want to figure out their own path moving forward. Look, it's easy. Like literally. Email, my, email me, mayor.stanton at phoenix.gov. Tell me what your policy interest is. Maybe there's boards and commissions on virtually every policy area of the city, and they actually matter in the city of Phoenix. We listen to our boards and commission. Maybe you're even thinking about maybe running for office. Two things you can do. Number one, again, find a campaign or candidate that you believe in. Roll up your sleeves and get involved in that campaign. And two, come to the city and we'll figure out a, a board or commission that you can really step up your game and not only substantially have a positive difference in the city, but also build your own 
uh, resonate. It is actually easier than you think that you are doing. People meet uh, elected officials and how, how is it possible to get to that position? Work hard, that's it. I mean, there really is no other answer uh, to that question. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you again, sir. We, we definitely appreciate it. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to the show, tell a friend, leave us a review, and as always, keep questioning because the struggle is real.